We have been following the plight of running backs trying to get paid in a manner uh, associated with their importance on the field. That is normally a way of paying players who are important for winning on the field, getting paid elite top dollar. Wide receivers, quarterbacks, left tackles, pass rushers. And when they perform on the field, when those guys perform on the field, and even if they are of advanced age and they're performing on the field to the tune of uh, numbers you would think are posted by a 20-year-old quarterback like Aaron Rodgers pushing 40, looking great, you're like, I don't know how much longer he can play, but he can keep playing. Let's pay him like he's uh, an elite player. Wide receivers, somebody who's uh, over the age of 30 and trying to do well, we're just sitting there thinking, okay, he's uh, – He's uh, uh, avoiding the the rigors of the NFL. He's got the fountain of youth, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Von Miller's got the fountain of youth, doesn't he? So let's, uh, let's pay them like uh, they're elite players, but not running backs. Those guys, when they put numbers up, 1,500, 1,600, 1,700 yards, you're sitting there thinking, well, how much longer can they do it? We got to go get a young guy. And we're not paying them either. So uh, the latest... From today, Saquon Barkley, it does appear, swallowed his pride and decided to come in from the cold and report to Giants training camp on time. And what was the deal sealer was the fact that the Giants decided to put a little something extra on top of his franchise tagged contract what is a two million dollar signing bonus so they decided to give him two of his 10 in the form of a signing bonus you get it you sign your contract and you get that money right here as opposed to having your money parceled out week to week throughout the season and guess what there's an incentive clause in there of about three uh, nine hundred and nine thousand dollars, he gets three hundred and three thousand dollars if he reaches three different benchmarks for his season in rushing yards, touchdowns, and catches. And you might sit there and think, okay, that's chump change compared to again what Saquon wanted, and in all fairness to the Giants, rejected. Apparently a $13 million contract per year was on the table. And the Giants reportedly, again, Mike Florio coming up in hour number two, said if you reject this, we're not putting it back on the table. And it does appear that they were true to their word. They didn't. Or didn't guarantee enough in the future years enough for Saquon to agree to it. And then the franchise tag, as we know, gets slapped. It's applied on players who don't mind, and it's slapped on players who do. And so... The Giants essentially give Saquon a little bit of something. And it's a rarity what they did. The last time a player who could just have to play on the franchise tag got a one-year deal plus a little something extra on top of it was when Edger and James got this deal from the Colts in 2005. They gave him an opportunity to make a little bit more. So this is something... The Giants are putting together out of the Bill Polian playbook, it appears. And to me, this has the feeling of Saquon having to swallow his pride a little bit here. Yeah. Because you look at the incentives. 1,350 rushing yards. He's never reached that in his career. The closest he's come was last year, 1,312. His rookie season, 1,307. In between that, 1,003 in his sophomore year, if you will, second year, and then the injury marred 2020, and then the injury shortened 2021. 11 touchdowns. He's only done that once his rookie season. Last year, he had 10. Those are the only multiple touchdown, double-digit touchdown seasons for him. 65 catches. The only time he's done it was once his rookie season, 91 uh, receptions. That's it. So he's got to have the best year of his career. Essentially. To get this. And it just has the feeling again. 
of having to swallow his pride to take this. Because the guy we saw on that podcast, the Money Matters podcast, one week ago yesterday when it came out, and he said on this pod, I could say F it, F the team, F my teammates, and hold out. And that's an option for me. And it was just so out of character for him, the Walter Payton Man of the Year candidate for the Giants last year, to say those words into a microphone. Today, you see the real Saquon, the guy who is a baller, who doesn't want to sit at home, who is a football player and a teammate and somebody who wants to dominate. And if he gets a little extra cash, a little face saver coming in, he doesn't want to sit ATC at the crib. He wants to be with his teammates. He wants to be with the Giants when they open things up at East Rutherford today. He wants to be on time. He doesn't want to be a holdout. He doesn't want to have that on his resume. That's the guy. And the Giants can say, hey, we did something nobody's done since 2005. We're going to let you wet your beak a little bit. But to use another Godfather phrase from Godfather Part 2, this kind of has the feel of one of the Rosado brothers giving Frank Pantangeli a $100 bill to commemorate their meeting. And Pantangeli told him, I don't, I don't like the C-note, Rosado. It's what it kind of feels like to me. Let's get them all. Let's hit them all now while we got the muscle. That's what it feels like to me. <laughs> They gave him a C-note, and he's like, I don't kind of like it, but I'll walk in. We all know what happened next, spoiler alert, but <laughs> but Saquon's there. And general managers across the rest of the league, ownership across the rest of the league, find out what type of cigar Joe Shane likes to smoke, if he does what red wine or white wine he likes to imbibe if he does, what beer he likes if he does partake in that, and send it to the Giants facility because this guy held the line Man. on the running back market with arguably the best running back in the league and a face of his franchise. And he's paying him one quarter of the amount minus the incentives, if they are reached, one quarter of the amount he gave to his quarterback, who did it only once now since being drafted out of Duke, and whose tremendous season, Daniel Jones, can be ascribed to three people. Number one, himself. He did it. He had it within him. He had to find it. Number two, Brian Dable, the coach of the year, who helped unlock it. And the guy who signed the contract, Daniel Jones, and the guy who is coach of the year also, because both of them succeeded with one another, couldn't have done it without number 26 also. And he's the one who's got to eat it. It's a heck of a meal, though. $11 million if he does meet all the incentives. It's a great meal. We would all sign for that. But when you compare it to the rest of the league and players who are as good as Saquon Barkley on the field and then, of course, in the community, it feels like the Ceno. And a high hat to use another phrase from the movies, a little Miller's Crossing for you right there. This is something that the running backs, when they zoomed over the weekend, Certainly didn't want to have developed two days later is Saquon signing for this, but Saquon's got to do what's in his gut and in his heart, and that is to play football while he can at the high level that he has. But the Giants, one more phrase, to salute. <laughs> we, we lift the, the glass in their direction. They held the line on the running back market. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.